I'm Jacob Lenhoff. How are y'all doing? I'm here to review the Brian Tim Show. Let's take a look at the Brian Tim Show, shall we? Here's some scenes. Slice of Life. I understand this is somehow a tie-in to an Xbox game or something of the like. Clearly it's valuable as we got it on clearance here. Now, the thing about this that absolutely has me intrigued is that this bold declaration, I was unaware that all ninjas hate fruit. Uh, I don't know how they maintain that lifestyle on an all-meat diet. <laughs> I would have thought in order to remain slim you'd have to eat some produce every once in a while. But clearly that is not the case. They live, I guess, on only maybe the blood of their victims. Heck, I don't know. Anyhow, this includes two ninja swords, 20 pieces of fruit, and 40 mission cards. And if uh, this guy and this girl can play it, I assume that Brian and I can. You all right back there, Brian? Uh, fruit ninja. Okay. Fruit ninja. Okay, I see our katana blades. Very nice. And, uh... Obviously, you gotta have some fruit. I see some watermelon slices, lemon, some apple, orange. She's got these little game pieces. We'll have to take a look closer at those. And then there's uh, some cards here, which we'll uh, get open here. Looks like it'll be pretty fun. Okay, we're not gonna go through all the rules for the people for the benefit of those viewers at home because it just took us like 15 minutes to, to go through everything. But basically, we understand how to play. We have not played yet. This is live. Okay, Tim, uh, I'm going to flip the first card. Now, do we want to have our swords down or in our hands? Uh, down sound, sounds fair. And then uh, let's go. So we got to flip the apple and the lemon. Now, one of your cards will be a bomb. Mine was a bomb, therefore I can't use it. I have to flip the other one. Now, what happens when that happens, Tim? I don't know. I think they figured we were going to be playing on a uh, flat surface. Well, mine did land up, so that's two bombs gone. for me. Is there like a certain number and then you blow up? There's a bomb. Okay, I, I got the card. What? All right, let's verify. You got the lemon, you got the apple, but you failed at the watermelon. Oh, I didn't even notice the watermelon. Here's a scene from the Brian Tim show where Brian Tim review Pop-Tarts. Kellogg's Frosted Chocolate Fudge Pop-Tarts. These cost $2.33 for the box. The box is 14.7 ounces. That makes a cost of 16 uh, cents per ounce. These can be bought at any store pretty much in these United States. Well, um, I know you mentioned a couple Halloween videos ago that pop tarts aren't really your thing. Well, uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, we've got, uh, what, almost 12, I think, uh, different varieties to try. Official, the name brand, just like Band Aid, everything you know, body calls Band Aids, Band Aids. Well, there's really only one Band Aid. Same thing with Kleenex, that's a whole other. But yeah, these are, I mean, Pop Tarts. Uh, come on. Alright, so this is the standard bearer. Here you go, sir. Actually, we should have gotten napkins or something so we don't make a mess on this nice table. Uh, we've got, you know, the chocolate with chocolate on top, the little white sprinks. Um, frosted chocolate fudge, man. Now, just to show how picky I am about my Pop-Tarts, I have to eat them upside down so I get the frosting on the tongue, so, yeah. And, of course, in Hamilton, Ohio, they had a Butler County Fair, and here's Tim going to the Butler County Fair and reviewing the food. All right, now to test our military skills, we're going to be given control of what appears to be an automatic firearm and going to unload on unsuspecting targets. Let's do it. So uh, they made sure that you have to punch over, so uh, my military skills, I'm afraid, weren't the best. Now, the objective was to eliminate all red. Um, I kind of started up high on this one, as you can see, worked my way over, but unfortunately ran out of ammunition before I could eliminate all of that. Uh, this one, uh, similar story, started down here, worked my way up. All in all, I'm reasonably happy with it. I mean, I didn't win any of the, the bright, stuffy uh, stuff surprises, but, you know, getting to fire a firearm is worth it. As spares are typically for the agriculturally minded, we have some fine reading literature for their disposal. Everything from tractors, tractors to tractors. Are you okay? Oh, it's only a harmless little bunny, eh? Yeah. I know what you're thinking. They look like boneless wings with crack on them. But these are fried Oreo cookies. 
And they're warm. Tag on it. The rule of the fair seems to be take something that's not fried, fry it out. <laughs> well, like my friends at work say, food is supposed to hurt, and this hurts. It's as hot. during the pandemic. Anyhow, to best describe the flavor, well, honestly, the Oreo sort of gets lost in the batter. It gets fried and absorbed. Um, there's a slight flavor of vanilla kind of near the middle, but it's not terribly profound. Honestly, it's about the same as if you were to get a funnel cake, so that's my overall thoughts on it. If you enjoy funnel cake, you'll enjoy these little bastards. Ah, uh, turkeys. So my reward for popping the young children's balloons, we have a lightsaber-like thing. They had the options of rainbow color, flashing, red, or green. And of course I'm going to go with green, because Luke's was green. I mean, come on, what else would I do? Also, we got nunchuckas. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to sheath these, because technically these would be considered a weapon. I don't know. Well, all things considered, I feel nicely separated from my money. There is lots of smelly animals in there. Makes me actually kind of glad that my, uh, doesn't quite work on completely. But, we have chucks. And where there's chucks, there is happiness. They're defective. See you next time. Oh, here's another scene where, um, Brian tours Trenton, Ohio. Everybody, it's Brian. And they're ready to take you on a walking tour of Trenton, Ohio. As it says, it's a small town with a big heart. I mean, don't you just love that? I mean, I'm already in love with the place. Anyway, let's go take a walk. Uh, let's go see what Trent has to offer. Alright, one other thing that I urge you to do, if you're going to be checking out the town, and you might only see it once, you might not be back for months, even years, uh, do yourself a favor and don't just check out the highlights. Don't just hit downtown or the main street. Check out the neighborhoods. Check out the residential sections. I mean, see where the, the real people that live here, where they sleep, where they eat, you know. Um, just like this, we're taking a walk, some beautiful old houses, um, some idyllic views. I mean, this has been one of my favorite parts of the trip uh, so far today. So make sure you get off the beaten path. Check out some of the residential stuff. It's definitely worth it. This is East State Street, it runs right through the heart of downtown Trenton. It's the hub of all the commerce and activity, and uh, there's restaurants, you know, whatever you got to take care of down here, um, baking, whatever. And uh, as you see, people are actually being pretty friendly to me out here in Trenton today, so that's always a plus too. And here's where um, they, Brian and Tim, look at uh, look at balloons and blow them up, and just all hell ensues. Of course, this is Brian and Tim we're talking about. Take a look. One of my customers over at Lockmart, we have a right to life, liberty, and property, was asking me where you find the balloons. And I said, how about these things? And he goes, those aren't balloons, those are punch balls. You punch them. I'm like, really? They wouldn't pop? And he goes, really? They don't pop? Well, let's find out if they don't pop. They're natural latex. I'm going to assume gluten-free, too. Let's do this. Oh, shit, that broke my... Oh, shit. Okay, oh, that one's been knocked out. Time to blow. To, I wanted to do a green one. You no, know, one of the one of the most requested things I've been getting for the Brian Tim show. A lot of people have been saying, "Hey, can you guys blow?" I really want to see you guys blow on the Brian Tim show. I didn't know what they meant, like a line of cocaine or what. But uh, we're gonna assume that they meant blow up a punch bag. Oh God, that rubbery taste that just ruined my appetite. Be free. Well, I guess that means we just have one ball. Normally, that'd be something we should see a doctor about. Ryan, let's see how this thing goes with punching. Go ahead and give me that socket, socket, oh, socket. Oh, oh, son of a... God, there was nothing on the minute. I mean, it didn't warn me that it was going to... Oh, man, I feel terrible. Uh, Here, hold what's this. What's next? Hey. Okay. Oh, God. Yeah. Nice. The roundhouse kick. 
Alright. There we go. He, he still got it. Uh, woo! <laughs> Brian and Tim show. Bitch. The Brian and Tim show is basically a variety show. Um, basically review the world. It was started in 2005 by Brian Hammonds, basically and his crew. And it's now pretty much the Brian and Tim show. It's pretty much the same thing. I mean, some may argue it. I don't know. But it's basically a variety show where Brian and Tim go around um, and review things from... They review things like Jones Soda, um, fried Oreo cookies, to Halloween goodies, to Easter eggs. You name it, they'll interview, they'll review it, tell you what they think of it, saying good and whatever. Um, basically, it's just a variety show. They've been, they've done, oh God knows how many episodes. I mean, they've uploaded I think like two in the last like week or two already, and um, they're quite good. I mean, you watch Brian, Brian and Tim do everything from they basically do everything from, you know, like I said, review stuff to uh, take tours from Ohio, you know, from Hamilton, Ohio to Cincinnati to Westchester to even Hollywood. They've even done that. So, it's a variety of things that is quite enjoyable. It's a fun show to watch. Um, and basically, they do all that. They take tours, they review stuff, and pretty much make asses out of themselves. <laughs> uh, they're quite funny. Um, what really drives the show is the chemistry between Brian Hammonds and Tim Chestnut. They are just terrific together. Um, I couldn't ask for a better combination. Uh, I think Tim kind of took over for a, for another person, but yeah, he, I mean, he's quite good in it. And Brian Hammonds, you know, who's basically led Review the World since 2005, is very, is just terrific, you know, and, you know, as a lead kind of performer. And Tim is his co star buddy as they review stuff. It's a very good show. You should definitely check it out. Um, the Brian Tim Show is shot and edited by Adam Sanders, and uh, it's quite a good show. Um, I'm Jacob Lenhoff. Thank you for watching. I seem to be missing some things up there. Yeah, what's missing it? Anyway, uh, these have been decommissioned, and uh, so has this episode. It's, it's gone. It's, it's finito. It's, uh, see you later. Yeah. Um, Tim, I had fun working on it with you, man. It's, it's always my pleasure. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. See you next time.